Baseball players today make home runs look easy, but hitting a ball with a bat just right is an amazingly difficult thing to do. Daniel Wolpert, a neuroscientist at Columbia's Zuckerman Institute, is uncovering the connections between body and brain that make such physical feats possible. So a question I like to ask my students is, why do we and other animals have brains? You might think we develop brains to reason and think about the world, but that's actually completely wrong. We have brains for one reason and one reason only, and that's to produce adaptable and complex movement. Movement is the only way we can interact with the world around us and increase our chance of survival. But moving is a really complex problem, and I can illustrate this if you think about how well we do compared to machines. We can now build computers that can beat the world's best chess players, but we can't yet build a robot that can manipulate a chess piece with the dexterity of a five-year-old. Picture a baseball player preparing for a pitch. Think about what his brain has to do. Coordinate hundreds of muscles, adapt as those muscles get tired, and react to the sight of the ball in flight all in a split second. In our lab, we try to uncover the mathematical computations that the brain uses to achieve this exquisite control. The batter starts by anticipating the path the ball will take. We have shown he does this using the same mathematics that doctors use to predict the chance of someone having a disease. To connect with the ball, the hitter must also deal with the fact that the muscles don't contract exactly the same way every time. The brain must plan the swing so that the effects of such variability is reduced so as to maximize the chance of a hit. But in our lab, we have shown that people can use a mental simulator in their brain to predict how their body will respond to commands from the brain so that errors can be anticipated and corrected. Every trainer will tell you that it's important to follow through after striking the ball. We have shown this helps learning as planning different swings activates different motor memories. A consistent follow-through ensures that the correct motor memory is activated and updated every time you perform a swing. Indeed, we've shown that people can even get better at learning when we ask them to merely imagine following through. Finding the mathematical algorithms that underlie movement is for me the greatest unsolved challenge facing neuroscience today. Uncovering this maths will help us treat people who have movement disorders, and it may even help us to build better robots. But fundamentally, understanding how the brain controls movement will allow us to understand how we move so well from using our fingers to play the piano to hitting the home run in the World Series. <laughs>